My name is Reinhard Gensel. I'm an astrophysicist, an experimental astrophysicist. I work at the Max Planck Institute, Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics. And I'm interested, and my, my team and I are interested in studying massive black holes um, and, and the formation evolution of the universe. So, first of all, um, the center of uh, our galaxy is a, a, testing, um, a testing ground for gravity. How did you come to this idea? Well, it's a, it's a longer story. I mean, the general relativity, uh, as you know, was uh, invented, so to speak, as an improvement over Newton's theory by Albert Einstein about 100 years ago. Then it took 50 years um, until the quasars were discovered. The quasars um, are very bright, but very, very distant phenomena, which we now know are, uh, with great likelihood, very, very massive black holes between billion, uh, millions to billions of solar masses, uh, which uh, attract uh, crete material and, and are very bright. And this idea that you would have these supermassive black holes is, is, is one of the things which the theory of Einstein predicts. But the question is, is it true? And so uh, the, the equations are much too far away at this point to make detailed measurements and test whether they are really truly black holes. So that's where the galactic center comes in. The galactic center is 24,000 light years away. That's really very close. And so over this last three decades, we've been able to make measurements with ever better precision, mostly of stars orbiting the very center, showing that there is indeed a mass, a compact mass there, about four million solar masses. And the evidence has gotten better and better and better that this is indeed uh, an Einsteinian, if you like, or a Kerr, a Kerr black hole. Um, the effect that Einstein's um, general relativity, relativity theory um, predicted um, is the Schwarzschild precession. What, what is it? Can you explain this to me? Well, if you, if you envision the solar system uh, and, and what Newton and, and Kepler knew about it, then you have the planets orbiting the, the sun on, on elliptical or, or circular orbits. And these ellipses, if there's nothing else in the way of a planet around the sun, is a figure which is always the same, okay? It stays the same in the orbit and the, the planet orbits around the sun for all times. Not so in general relativity. And uh, there are several effects here. One is just due to the fact that the space-time, which uh, the, the sun generates, uh, makes the orbit uh, of, the, of the planet uh, precess, move forward, ro rotate, if you like, a little bit uh, forward uh, over time. And the second thing, if the, the planet, uh, if, the, if the sun has a, a angular momentum, so it rotates, uh, then there's a second effect, which is also a precession. So it's the, the, the biggest effect of these two is the precession due to the mass. So in the case of the sun, uh, the uh, precession of a planet was actually uh, detected before general relativity was known. That's, that's not, not very well known, that the Mercury, the innermost planet, was looked at in the 19th century by astronomers, um, mainly to look for disturbances on its orbit by other planets. And in this way, Uranus was discovered, actually. And uh, many people at the time thought there might be a planet inside of Mercury uh, called Vulcan. And they were sort of looking for an effect which could not be exp explained by the other planets. And indeed, they found some, uh, but not Vulcan. They had, detect, in, in fact, in fa uh, detected uh, 30, 40 years before Einstein the Schwarzschild precession. And so when, when Einstein then uh, wrote it down, everyone said, hey, okay, uh, there it is, uh, okay. So if we already knew about Mercury, why do we need to look at the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy? Yes, so uh, why are we, why are we uh, testing and testing general relativity? Well, because that's the nature of physics. Theories 
And the famous theory of Einstein is, is, is no different here. Uh, are only transitory uh, uh, truths, if you like. Um, in fact, we believe there is good reason that the Einstein's theory must be wrong. On small scales, for instance, very small scales, where you would have quantum effects and atomic effects and so forth. Plus, there are other theories uh, which are similar to, but not the same as general relativity, which uh, predict diff slightly different things. So we must, as scientists, that's, our, that's the scientific method, keep on testing in different parts of parameter space whether a theory is correct in order to either, you know, find it is correct or it is not correct. So that's, that's what we're doing here. We are looking in part of a parameter space in mass, which has not been looked at. I mean, the laboratory experiments or the, the solar system tests are on very small scales, very small masses. Then LIGO looked at and, and tested general activity uh, with so-called so stellar black holes, a few tens of solar masses. Here we're looking at an object which has millions of solar masses. So that's very different. And so that's one way, that's one way we want to uh, test the theory. There's a second uh, motivation we have. And that is to actually show that the object which is in the center of, a mil of the Milky Way is a massive black hole. It's plausibly is so far, but it might not. It might be a double object. It might be a triple object. Who knows? And so by making the measurements we are measuring or have been making, we are basically firming up the evidence ever more that this is indeed a supermassive black hole. Now the third, if you like, is the biology of black holes in their environment because uh, black holes are not lonely uh, objects because of their gravity. They are attracting other objects. One would expect, in fact, to be uh, a massive black hole in the center of a galaxy to be uh, tightly surrounded by a cluster of stars and may maybe stellar black holes or maybe so-called intermediate mass black holes. So these would be objects of, say, a few hundred to a few thousand uh, solar masses. They have not been seen, but they might exist. Our method, in fact, has been able to test that. And to our surprise, if you like, they have not seen anything. The object in the galactic center is pretty lonely. Uh, you know, in its vicinity, there is the star which we've been using, but so far we have not seen any, anything inside. Your team has worked on this project for almost 30 years, or around 30 years, which is a really long time. A lot has happened in, the, in those last three decades. Which are the technological advancements that have happened since? Yes, indeed. Uh, I, I can see I'm getting older and older here. Yeah? And uh, <laughs> I started this when I was in my 20s. Uh, and, and, and over this time, over this period of time, uh, we have made, you know, measurement improvements of factors between a few thousand to a million in resolution, in sensitivity, etc. The most recent step we, take, we took is to replace a single telescope, uh, which one usually uses to make images, by four telescopes, which we combine. That's called interferometry. So we take four eight-meter class telescopes of the European Southern Observatory, the very large telescope in Chile, and combine it optically to an equivalent 130-meter telescope. And the bigger the telescope, the better the resolution. So with this interferometer called gravity, we can measure basically a few centimeters on the moon, if you like, and that gives us the precision to uh, really, uh, you know, nail uh, the motion of a star around a black hole so well that we can see these uh, effects of general relativity. With gravity, you could show in 2018 another effect of the general relativity. What is that and why do we need to prove it all over and over again? Right. Well, uh, the, the effect we're seeing now is basically... Uh, true for, for, for objects with a mass. Now, general relativity, uh, in contrast to Newton, also says 
that uh, gravity affects the motion of uh, massless uh, things like light. Uh, so if, 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 if you have a flashlight or a laser and you're close to a black hole and you shine that to us at a large distance, then the uh, laser light uh, has to climb out of the uh, 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 so massive uh, gravity around the black hole and it gets less, uh, you know, it gets, its energy lessens and so we see it red shifted. So that's one of the effects. The effect we are seeing now is a second effect, but there are many more. Uh, the next one we were, would like to see is the effect of the spin. So if, there, if a black hole uh, uh, is rotating, then it takes the, the space-time around with it, and a star which would be moving there, or gas which would be moving there, would see that and start to wobble. And if you can see that, you can me measure the, the spin of the black hole. Now, these are very subtle effects, very difficult to measure. So you have to slowly learn to climb the ladder of uh, 7,000 meter mountains, then you go to 8,000 meter mountains, and then finally you hopefully end up at Mount Everest. It's an amazing project. Congratulations on it. Um, what's next? What's the next project that you and your team are working on? Well, we are in the process of improving uh, the gravity instruments still more, maybe as much as a factor of 100. We'll see. Uh, with that, we want to look at distant black holes. So far, we've been looking at the closest massive black hole, but quasars are very, very distant from us. Uh, with gravity, we can see the motion of gas and resolve the sizes of these regions and thereby measure then the mass precisely. So if you can do this for many, many quasars, many distant objects, then you can solve perhaps the riddle how massive black holes play the role in the evolution of galaxies. We now know that basically every galaxy has at its center a, a massive black hole of different masses. We'd like to understand that in detail. There is, a, if you like, a symbiosis between these black holes and galaxies, and we need to understand that in order to understand the evolution of the universe. So what we see here is the elliptical orbit of the star we've been looking at. It moves around uh, the black hole, which is located in this still on the lower right. You may see this uh, black spot there. It does so in 16 years. For most of, the, most of this orbital motion, Newton's theory is just fine. It's only when the, the star enters within the year, uh, the region around the black hole here, where it, it comes as close as about two or three times the orbital radius of Neptune, uh, when uh, general relativity plays a role. And then what happens is that this ellipse, which is stationary in Newton's theory, all of a sudden starts to shift, it, it precesses forward by a small amount, but ever more. And, and basically we have been able to precisely measure uh, this precession and shown that it is identical to what general relativity would predict. Now, as I said, this, this has uh, several, several aspects to it. One is the testing of the theory. And the other one is that if there were a deviation from the massive black hole, if it were two black holes, this wouldn't look like that. If there were a big black hole and an intermediate mass black hole, that wouldn't look like that. And so by, by seeing the effect so pure, you can say a lot about the environment of the big black hole. Perfect. It's super, super interesting. Thank you very much for the time you've given me. Um, and good luck to you and uh, a lot of success for the next project. Okay, thank you.